Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome. My name is Melissa Faust from stampwithmelissa.com and welcome to my Tuesday night live video. It is Tuesday, October 3rd or Spooktober 3rd, uh, 2023. It is 5 p.m. Central Time, my local time. Um, I'm just going to give a second chat a little bit while I allow everyone to kind of find the video. It is le leave streaming. It's leave streaming. <laughs> It's live streaming to both Facebook and YouTube. So I just give a second for it to kind of pop up in both places. Hi, mom. Hi, Eva um, from Prince Edward Island, Canada. That's what I assume PEI means. But um, yeah, that's so cool. Uh, welcome, everyone. As you join, whether you're watching live or if you're watching the replay, please do leave a comment. Say hello. Um, let me know where you're watching from if you want. Let me know your favorite color if you want. Let me know if your dog is watching with you for sure. <laughs> Um, hi, Lori. Welcome, everyone. So today we are going to play with the St. Nicholas bundle. And I just have to say, when I come down to my craft room to get ready before I go live. Hi, Maria. Um, oh, from uh, Puerto Rico. Rainy, I wish. I think it's supposed to start raining here soon. So fingers crossed. <laughs> um, I come down and I get ready and I listen to music. And usually what I do is, Lori, I didn't know your favorite color was yellow. Hmm filing that away. Um, <laughs> hi, Leona. Welcome. Um, but usually I say I have, you know, an Amazon Echo and I say one song and it plays a bunch. And I don't know if yours does that, but it used to really annoy me. Um, but now I kind of like it because I found some of my favorite songs that way. Uh, so I asked it to play a certain song. And um, of course, because I'm live, the name of the song is escaping me, but I'll try to I'll try to remember it later. Maybe I'll post it later. Um, anyway, so it kept playing songs and it ended up playing by the same artist I had originally asked for. It played a Christmas song. And so we are officially in Christmas season, you guys. It's Christmas. <laughs> um, I know we've done a class to go featuring a Christmas set already. We did it back in August. Um, but that was just a little bit of a teaser because we had an online exclusive set. Now we are going like full fledged into creating Christmas cards. Okay. So I hope you're ready. Do you have to start your Christmas cards this early? No, but you can get the kits and have them ready for when you are ready to start Christmas crafting. And I do encourage you to start it early because nobody wants to be doing that last minute in December. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> hi, Debbie in Kansas. Welcome. Um, so. Before we start crafting today, we're going to, of course, we're playing with Santa Claus or St. Nicholas. Um, before we start crafting, I do have a couple of super fun things to tell you about. Um, hi, Denise from Texas. Yeah, I bet it's warm there. It's like, here, let me see if I can check on my watch. It's 82 degrees here right now. We're supposed to be back to our normal 50s at the end of the week, and I'm looking forward to it because it's really not fun. Like, I'm in a t-shirt. It's not fun to be in a t-shirt um, in October. Sorry. Uh, it's just not. Um, oh, yay! Debbie is done with her Thanksgiving cards. You're like a month and a half early. That is awesome. Hi, Anne from Michigan. Welcome. Um, yeah, that doesn't that feel so good to be done? De it's 85 where Debbie is. Yeah, no thanks. <laughs> I'm in Minnesota. It's supposed to be cold here. Okay. Okay. All right. So let me flip my camera down. I see I'm a little, hello. Okay. There we go. Sometimes I just have to let my phone catch up. So, um, I'm going to wait before I show you this. Hold on. Things are slow. It's lagging on me. It's okay. It's, it's all right. Well, it'll catch up. Um, hi Lynn. Yeah. Too hot. 84 in Southern Wisconsin. It's just, and hot. Okay. We have two Lynn's. Lynn uh, K says 84 in Southern Wisconsin. Gross. And Lynn M says uh, it's hot in Pennsylvania too. Yeah. Just gross. Like it's fall. Let's move on. <laughs> um, anyway. Okay. looks like we're caught up now. Um, we have a really cool starter kit special going on. And now before you're like, oh, Melissa, move on. I just have to make sure that you really know about this because I'm going to tell you something right now. A lot of people when I'm like, oh, hey, you should really consider this. They're like, I don't want to sell. And I'm like, do you think when I signed up at 18 years old as a high school senior going to college in the fall that selling was on my mind? No, not even close. I wasn't, I would never thought that that would happen. What I wanted was a discount on the hobby I had just found. I was going to college. Yes, I did have a job through college. Um, I, I have worked since my junior year of high school. So yes, I had a job, right? So I had the money. But 
when you're a college kid, you don't have that much money, right? Like I didn't have that much money. So why wouldn't I take advantage of the discount? So that's what I'm here to tell you. It's been seven and a half years for me. Um, I have not dropped at all in that time. Um, and now I'm like, all right, we're going to share this stuff online. And that's the coolest thing I think about Stampin' Up! is that you can take the trajectory however you want. And you can wake up one day and go, I'm going to post a picture of this card online and see where it takes you, okay? Or whatever, share it with your neighbor or whatever you want to do. So I seriously want you to consider the starter kit, okay? Because it's pretty awesome. Um, to celebrate Stampin' Up's 35th anniversary, they're giving two super cool options. They started today and they go through Halloween. So we're going to say, treat yourself, don't trick yourself, okay? <laughs> That's what I thought of when I heard Halloween. So um, you can either... Okay, let me tell you the base starter kit. Let me go back to my, just my face for a second because I was gonna show you something and now I'm just talking. Um, <laughs> um, so let me go to the basics of, of what the starter kit normally is. It's $99 plus tax. You get to pick out $125 in product and you get free shipping on it, okay? Then after that, you get to save 20% on all of your future Stampin' Up! orders. And if you sign up under me, you join the most amazing team in the world. Just saying. No. <laughs> um, so right now, if you sign up, you can do two things that kind of affect that original starter kit. First, you can choose to get the same amount of product. So still get $125 in product, but you pay 35% less. So it ends up being like $64 or something like that. Um, so $64 plus tax shipping is free you get $125. It's like $60 in free product. Okay. Or you can get 35% more product, which means you still pay the 99, which is the normal cost, but you get 168, almost $169 in free product, whatever you want to pick. So like if you, you're thinking about it, Cherith, that's awesome. It, it is definitely something to at least give a thought behind. So you don't have to do anything if you don't want to. But, oh, I got a mad face reaction. I made somebody mad. Sorry. <laughs> um, or it could have been uh, clicked the wrong reaction. Oh, well. Um, anyway, so they're really cool options. If you have any questions, reach out to me. I'm not going to push you into anything. But if you're serious, like, like if you're like, hmm, I really want to know if this is something that makes sense for me, please reach out. I am happy to answer any questions you have. I'm happy to help you out, um, all that stuff. So now I'm going to show my desktop because there are some, one of the perks of being a demonstrator is pre-order, right? And you guys know we have online exclusives now. Well, we've got some new online exclusives that just launched for pre-order for demonstrators today. And these items can actually be added to your starter kit. Oh, what I was saying earlier is that the starter kit is a really good way to get the stamp and cut and emboss machine because if you chose like the first option you can get the thing for 64 dollars. and why wouldn't you do that <laughs> literally why would you not do that and then you can get 20 percent off on your future orders and there's no obligation so i i don't know why you wouldn't but anyway okay so i wanted to just show you in case you had an interest in this i see that i'm a little laggy here so this is the first set um that we are allowed to pre-order um, it is called Garden Meadow. This is the bundle, but there's actually a suite available. So I'm just going to flip through these. So this is the whole suite that's available. Okay, so you can see the stamp and die bundle, which is here, and a card sample. Then there is, here's the stamp. Oh, we're frozen. Hold on. There we go. Um, here's the stamp set up close. I love it. Um, I know that I want to, like, craft, you know, Christmas, but, oh, it's just so cute. I can't wait for this. Um, I can wait for spring because I still want autumn <laughs> but you know we can start our crafting early then we're ready here are the dies okay here's the paper so lynn just said she loves the dsp isn't that beautiful so um they told us yesterday that uh somebody at stampin up actually like watercolored this or oil painted it or like somehow created these like hand did these and then it was like technologied <laughs> into a paper that they could um you know, have for us. So that's really cool. These are the embellishments. I don't remember what they're called, but we've got some birds and some uh, dragonflies or fireflies. No, I think they're dragonflies. Anyway, this ribbon is really pretty. It's got a um, strip 
of uh, pecan pie in the middle. Super duper pretty. Um, and then uh, now we're moving on. So that's all in that suite. And you can order items individually too. If you're like, oh, I really don't like the paper, um, then you don't have to get the paper. But if you're like, oh, I really want two packs of the paper. Well, you can get two packs of the paper. <laughs> um, this is another item. These are, I don't remember exactly what this is called shimmer paper or glimmer paper something like that and it's petal pink pretty peacock and highland heather um super duper cute yeah joan it is way too hot in minnesota i agree and then this one like shut the front door this was made for me um look at this bundle i'm sorry if if that was um loud <laughs> but i just saw this and like screeched i mean it's so stinking cute so this is the fluffiest friends bundle you sure as heck can expect to see more of this i did pre-order every single item from the online exclusives that i could this morning and they'll be here on thursday so um i'm pretty excited about that um this card right here like i'm i'm coloring that as winnie the pooh sorry that's winnie the pooh Anyway, so here's the stamp set up close. Of course, there are dies. I don't have a picture of the dies here other than right there. But um, yeah, Lori, I did respond to your email too. But yeah, I mean, come on. Like, look at how stinking cute. It's so stinking cute. And look at the little hamster. And there's a beaver with a heart like Valentine's Day. <laughs> um, okay, so Corinne, the shimmer paper. It, it was not on the flyer that they gave us, um, but it was in the like online store. So if you check, if you are a demo and you go in or whatever, you can check the online store, um, go there and hit online exclusives. And then it says like pre-order next to everything that we get to pre-order. So anyway, so if you have any questions, um, all of those items will pop up. If you go to start a starter kit, it will, I think it's like one of the first things that pops up. So you can add any of those. If you need help with a starter kit, you can reach out. Um, if you're like, Melissa, stop talking. I'm super interested and in just give me the link. Here's where you want to go. Um, join.stampwithmelissa.com. And that's where you can go and build your starter kit. But as always, I am available for questions as well okay so let me know if you have any all right anyway moving on from that that's just really exciting and i i'm i can't even with that fluffiest friends bundle <laughs> i have some cards in the mail that i wanted to share with you real quick so this first one is from my friend deborah harrison now if you recognize that name it's because we're doing the very cute christmas series together um and that starts next saturday the 14th um but look at this cute card it was her birthday about a week ago i think it was a week ago um so i sent her she really likes uh the cookies from honolulu cookie company so i ordered some had them shipped and uh, got, gave her some of those. So she was pick of the patch. So super cute with the them bones DSP. Um, perfect for these fall cards. So, and you could swap out, you could stamp the pumpkin, the Halloween face here, or the jack-o'-lantern face, and then change out the sentiment. And there you go. You've got some cute Halloween cards. Okay. This one is from, where did I put the envelope? There we go. This one is from my upline Sue Kramer. So it's really cool. She did like the, I don't know if there's a specific name for it, but it's like, um, it, it reminds me of the spotlight technique, but it's not really spotlight. Te oh my gosh, I can't say the word spotlight technique because that's like a zoomed in area, like just a little portion of the card. Um, but anyway, so this is a really cool card. So thank you, Sue, for that. Um, this one is from my awesome team member, Alicia Markfurt. Um, and I, I don't remember the name of this card either. I have not made one and I need to. And I was glad to get Alicia's because it's like when you have one in your hand, you're like, oh, okay, that's how you do that. Okay. Um, <laughs> anyway, so she is on my team. She was redeeming um, some of the uh, coupons I give to my team. And so this is the card she sent them to me in. She could have just sent the coupons, but she had to jazz it up because she's awesome. Um, and it's so cute and pink. So <laughs> thank you, Alicia, for that one. Okay, and then I think the, the last three here, I recently did a card swap with my team and I shared my card last week. It was this one with Pick of the Patch. This is the one I did for my team for the card swap. Um, but I have all of theirs in my hands now. So this one was my mom's, super cute. Her very first time doing a card swap. So go mom. I know she's here watching. So everyone just say, go mom. <laughs> um, it was her first time doing the card swap. So she was really excited. Um, and she used, I can't remember the name of it. Is it joy of Christmas DSP? I think. Um, and I thought it, I think it turned out really cute. So thanks mom for that. Um, Kim Faust, I should say, uh, give her proper credit. Of course, 
there's another one from Alicia. Okay. I forgot to show you decorated envelopes. Of course. Um, yeah, go love. <laughs> this one is from Alicia Markford. Um, this is her card swap card. And this one, I know that she, uh, the like original template, whatever is from Susan Campfield, but I don't know what Susan calls it. Uh, but it opens like this. Look at how neat that is. Actually, maybe she wrote it on here. Squeeze box fun fold. That's what this is called. So it's like got a little slit in here. So you could put like a gift card or a little note like Alicia did. Um, she put the recipe in. So I have all the products she used uh, right there. But it opens like this. Okay. And it like, can you see how that goes? That's really cool. So I have to figure out how to make this and we will make this sometime. Okay. So that one is from Alicia. And then this last one is from my team member, Janet Sitaway. And she used the super cute, very cute bundle. Um, and I love that she embossed on vellum. Why have I not thought of that? <laughs> um, so this one is super duper cool too. And she did a little stamped background. Um, so very beautiful cards. So thank you everyone for my team. Well, thank you for my team for your incredible cards. I love them. So what do you say we start stamping now that we've been chatting for a while, but we had so much to catch up on. It is the new Stampin' Up! year. So you'll notice I have my new tracker behind because we're earning Disney now. And I just want to say thank you so much for all the support you show me. Um, you guys are awesome. So anyway, let's go ahead and let's talk about tonight. So if you've got your mini catalog, you can flip to page 11 and you can see the St. Nicholas bundle. And that is what we are using tonight. Um, I love this bundle because of all the coloring you get to do. Um, yes. Is it, aren't they great? I just thought, you know, when you see everybody's, um, like creativity come through, it's like, oh, that's so cool. Right. Um, but there's also something like special about it, like when you get a card, right? And so that's what I love about our card swaps is because we had four people participate. And so you get card, like you get three other cards and it's like, oh, I got a card, you know, and it's like happy mail. It's not a bill. <laughs> um, anyway, so this is the bundle we are going to use. Um, yes, building the fireplace. We are going to do that tonight as well. Um, here's some of the dies. I already pulled some of them out. Some of these detailed pieces I already pre die cut, but some of it we will have to stamp and die cut together. And so I've got those off to the side. So we're ready for tonight. And yeah, so page 11 here, you can see that the bundle down here is the discounted price and the item code. So if it's something you're ordering, make sure you do that. Don't accidentally just order the stamp set like um, I've done in the past <laughs> if you're looking to get the dies too. And the dies are really cool, so you're going to want them. Okay? All right. So let me show you um, the first card. So this one I uh, shared on my blog yesterday on Monday. Um, and this one I kind of did... I don't think I colored his face. No, I didn't. But um, I, I wanted to like push my, my comfort zone a little bit. I always color with my Stampin' Blends because I love them a lot. And I was like, you know what? We need to try something different. So this one, I actually colored with my watercolor pencils and a blender pen. Um, and the blender pen just kind of helps the color look less uh, color penciled. <laughs> um, if that's a phrase or a word I can use. Um, but anyway, so we've got two packs of watercolor pencils and I just picked out the colors I liked from each of those. Um, this one here is actually crushed curry, but I thought it looked like wild wheat. So I loved it. Um, so this one is super, super cute. And then of course I've used some of that, um, traditions of St. Nick DSP in the background there as well. Okay, so let's take a look at the three cards we're going to make together tonight. And then I'll tell you a little bit about what we're going to do. So we're going to make this one, this one with our cute fireplace, and then this one we're going to make a square card. So um, I am going to show you how to put together each of the cards tonight uh, during our video. And if you are interested in getting all of the card kits sent to you as a free gift from me, um, all you have to do, let me pop this up before I forget. Um, all you have to do is place an order in my online store this week through this Friday, October 6th at midnight central time. Um, orders of $35 or more before the tax and shipping amounts will get you the supplies to make two of each of these. So six cards total. Um, you'll get all the pre-cut cardstock pieces. So like I'll die cut this for you and whatever. I'll emboss this, all that stuff. Um, the only thing is that I will not stamp any images for you or die cut the images that use this bundle. Okay. Um, I'll give you the cardstock pieces to do that on your own, but you will want the bundle if you want your cards to look exactly like mine. Um, I'll even include this linen thread for you. 
And then something a little bit different. Usually I do include your DSP in the card kits. This week, that is going to be your $50 gift. So if your order goes up to $50 before tax and shipping, you are going to get a quarter pack of the Traditions of St. Nick DSP. This is an online exclusive designer series paper and it's so stinking cute. So I have just a sampling here for you. Um, so you'll get two six by six uh, sheets of each pattern. So there's that one. Here's this one. Here's this one. And there's six uh, different or I should say kind of 12 designs, but like six because they're double-sided. Okay, this one. And then this one I already had like completely cut up. So just imagine. <laughs> um, I can show you as we do card kits as well, but there's the other side there. So that one, and then same thing here. I already had it cut. So this one I thought was so cute. And then there's that other side as well. So that is going to be your freebie. So this week you will need to cut all of your own DSP. Um, and you can get that for free from me with a $50 order this week. Okay. All right. So let's keep this card off on the side here. And we are going to take a look at how to make this one. So I'm going to pull out my card kit here and show you. So this week, or I should say this card kit will have a mossy meadow card base, a mossy meadow layer that is embossed with that beautiful. Look at how beautiful this is. I love this folder. Um, perfect for fall and Christmas. Uh, but this is the distressed tile 3D embossing folder. Um, actually, it's funny. My mom embosses and she sent one through her very first one a few weeks ago. And she goes, oh, it didn't emboss all the way. I said, no, that's what it's supposed to do, <laughs> which is funny. Um, yeah. Anyway, you'll have a piece of basic white to stamp and die cut, stamp color and die cut your Santa. Hi, Sherry from Indiana. Welcome. Um, you'll have a piece of cherry cobbler. You will cut out your designer series paper. Here's this piece. So um, when you do order, you do get a PDF also, and that will have all the measurements that you need for everything, but also the DSP that you need to cut. Okay. You'll have a piece of early espresso and you'll have a piece of basic white for your sentiment. Hi, Leslie. Um, so let's go ahead. We're going to start with stamping. And let's grab our sentiment and early espresso to start. So this one is a beautiful sentiment. It's got kind of like the, the movie title, right? Because Christmas season is so fancy. <laughs> and it says, may the Christmas season fill your home. I am inking this up in early espresso. And then we're just going to stamp it in the center of our piece here. Beautiful. I love it. All right. We can close up early espresso so we don't make a mess. And then we're going to grab our other piece of basic white here. I'm going to grab Santa. Now you can use whichever Santa, but I'm going to use the one carrying the presents and grab my tuxedo black memento ink because we'll be using Stampin' Blends. So we want to use an opposite. So Stampin' Blends are alcohol based. So you want to use a water-based ink when you color with them. So we are using tuxedo. I, because this stamp is actually like larger than my ink pad, I kind of, you know, ink on top, <laughs> if that makes sense. All right. We've got that all inked up. We can go ahead and stamp this down. Now, the thing with tuxedo is that um, you want to leave it sit for a second. I did a demonstrator event a few years ago and somebody said, let it marinate. And that just sticks in my head every time now. So we're going to let it marinate for a second and pick it up. And there we've got a beautiful image. Okay. All right. So we are going to color this with our Stampin' Blends. Now you can use whatever colors you want. Um, if you order for this week's class, you can order any of the Stampin' Blends that I use that you don't already have or whatever else you want. Um, but I'm going to use Real Red, Mossy Meadow, Cherry Cobbler, Pecan Pie, and Petal Pink. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. I like to start with my dark blend. And we are going to do Santa's like robe coat thing. Okay. And I am just, there's a few lines in here that kind of show you where there would be some shadowing. And so I'm just kind of adding some of that real red to some of those places. There is a little, um, so you can see on my sample card, I'm going to point out my oops. I colored right here across the fluff. Don't do that. <laughs> um, unless I want the fluff to also be real red, but I wanted to leave it white. So um, you just kind of have to look around here and you can use my sample to help you, um, but just to kind of determine where you should color, <laughs> where each of the little pieces are. So I'm going in with my light one now and we'll just color in kind of the rest. And then we got to do this little cap up here too. And I did not add the dark to it. I'll just do light. It's a skinny spot, so that's okay. 
We've got over here under those presents, he's got a little bit of his robe sleeve sticking out. Or cloak. I suppose this is a cloak, huh? I should call it that. Okay, then we'll color along the side here. I get very cautious. I have to pay attention when I'm trying to go around things to focus. Okay, so we've got that all colored. We can go ahead and color in the rest of his cloak. And we've got to do over on this side, okay? I'm going to switch to my bullet tip end because I'm getting nervous. <laughs> I am nervous I'm going to accidentally color where I don't want to color. So, all right, we've got that bullet tip. Beautiful. And I think we got everything we needed. Okay. All right. So let's switch to Mossy Meadow now. And I used Mossy Meadow to color in the presents. Now you can do these however you want. I just kind of, um, I didn't want to add a whole lot of different blends to this. So you can absolutely go crazy if you want to and add as many colorful presents as you'd like to. But I am choosing basically to either color the ribbon and the bow or like the gift wrap. So on this big present right here, I am just doing the present in the dark mossy meadow. And because I'm actually choosing not to blend, so I'm just using it as one color, like a marker, right? And I'm choosing not to blend because I can get kind of like two colors out of it, right? So just sneak over here a little bit. Okay, so we've got that one. Then over here on this one, I'm going to do just the ribbon with the dark. All right, over here and up that way. Okay, so we've got that with the dark. Then I can take the light, and now this is a lighter mossy meadow, so it kind of looks like it's almost a different color um, when you use it on its own, and then you can do the same kind of thing. So I'm picking one of the presents. I'm going to color like the gift wrap. Okay, and just kind of sneak in where you can. Some of those spots are real teeny tiny, so just do your best, and then this one over here, I'm going to do the ribbon. Okay. Just like that. Oh my gosh, look, I forgot some of his coat. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. That's the inside. I lied. <laughs> I was like, oh, I forgot to color that. No, I think it's the inside of his fluff. So we're good. We're good. Okay, so then I'm going to go to Cherry Cobbler. And with Cherry Cobbler, all I'm going to do is color his little um, little purse here. It's not really a sack. Um, so I'm just going to color this. So I just used, he's got like a little fringe on the front. So I'm just using the dark Cherry Cobbler to color that. And then we'll use the light cherry cobbler to color the rest. What do you guys think? Is this like a coin? Is it a cookie purse? It's a it's a cookie purse for sure. Where else would you use, right? Okay, so we've got that colored. Sorry, I know my um, desktop view is a little fuzzy, so I apologize for that. Um, but you guys, I'll talk you through it. <laughs> we'll do our best. All right, then I'm going to switch to pecan pie, and we are going to color in his boots and his gloves with pecan pie. So I'm just using the dark to add a little bit of that shading. It's really weird because both of the um, devices I film on are on the same Wi-Fi. So I don't know why one will go out and the other one is fine, but whatever it is, what it is, right? Technology is awesome. <laughs> All right, going in with the light here to color in the rest of his boots. And we'll do this glove or mitten. It's a mitten. And this one. Okay, beautiful. We've got, oh no, we got to do, got to do his face. So I'm going to use petal pink. You can use whatever color you would like to. And I'm just going to do his face. So you could also go in with like a gray and do um, his beard and his hair and everything, but I'm not going to do that. We're going to go just here. Okay. All right. So let me grab then my dye and I will get that down. I'm going to use my post-it note tape here and add that just so it doesn't move. Let me grab my mini. Here's my mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. And we are going to die cut out our Santa Claus, our St. Nicholas. 
Okay, so let me add my plates here and we'll crank this through. Okay. I know I need to replace my plates for my mini. I just did for my big one. I need to do it for my mini. Oh, I think my die moved just a tiny slight bit. Oh, it looks okay, right? <laughs> it definitely moved a little bit up here, but that's okay. I think it looks good enough. Um, oh, your post-it post note tape is coming this week. That's so exciting. I'm excited for you to love it. It's the best. All right, I'm going to grab my card base. Now, I've talked about this in recent videos, but I am going to use my seal, and I'm actually going to put my seal on my card base. Look at how gummy it is. There we go. We are going to put it on here because I am, I've got this embossed layer and sometimes, oh, it looks good. Okay, good. Thanks mom. <laughs> sometimes my seal, when I run it on my embossed piece, it will actually tear up the cardstock um, just because I think I press too hard. So I actually have been starting to run it right onto my card base where I know it will be covered. And because this piece is covering the whole front, um, I just went ahead and went to do that. Okay. Oh, Lori has post-it note tape too. I know it's awesome. All right. So we can go ahead and fold and burnish our card just like that. And then let's go ahead and adhere some pieces here. So I've got my DSP. Um, I know, isn't it such a beautiful, it's, it is very classic Santa. And I think it's just so beautiful. I love that they came out with some designer series paper that matches, um, in the online exclusives. I think it just made the bundle. It, it has honestly added so much to it, so much more value. You can do so much with this DSP. It's so pretty. Um, so, all right, then we're going to add some seal to the back of this. Now, um, slight little plug for those of you who are at my Stampin' Cross Country virtual retreat this weekend, you may recognize this card because I totally posted it last week as part of our sketch challenge. Um, and yeah, it's part of a sketch challenge. I was like, hi, I bet I could make a cute card using the St. Nicholas bundle. And here it is. <laughs> um, so thank you to everyone who attended that. I hope you had a lot of fun. I know I did. Um, and this is following one of our sketch challenges. So um, I have added dimensionals to the back of our early espresso piece here. And then we're going to go ahead and tuck this onto our card. I'm going to set it right about here. Okay. And we can grab our St. Nicholas. And we are going to add dimensionals to the back. Now, I'm not going to put any over here, um, kind of under the presence, because that's going to lay on top of our early espresso layer here. And I don't want to worry about it being uneven. Okay, but we can sneak some over along the side. Peel off these backings here. And then if you want to, you could even add some seal where we didn't add dimensionals. And then we can go ahead and stick this onto our card. Oh, so cute. I love it. All right. So to finish this one off, I am using the um, speckled dots and I'm going to use these brown ones. Um, and we are going to stick this down. I'm going to use one big one there and then one little one to set right next to it. You can use whatever embellishments you want. If you are part of my card club, you should hopefully have some extras of these, unless you loved them so much. Um, but you should have some extras otherwise to go ahead and use on this card. So there is our first card. I hope you guys love that one. I know I do. I think it's so, so beautiful. All right, let's go to card number two. Now this one features very minimal stamping and a lot of die cuts. I did die cut everything out, everything out beforehand before we went live. So let me show you that um, so you can see what you get. Hopefully we get all the pieces out. Look at that. <laughs> Just a little pile of die cuts. Hopefully we don't lose anything. All right, so this one will have a thick basic white card base. Here is that DSP I couldn't show you very well earlier because I had cut it, um, but it's beautiful. And this side reminds me, I think it would work well with like a gingerbread stamp. We have one in the Sending Cheer set, and I really want to use this pattern with it. So um, you'll have a piece of vellum. You'll have a piece of basic white. Um, we're going to stamp the sentiment on here, so then I'll trim it down once we stamp that. And then you're going to have lots of cardstock to do lots of die cutting. So you're going to have some copper clay to die cut out. Um, this piece here, let me show you what I used. 
Come here. There we go. So copper clay with this guy. Okay. Then you're going to have Cajun craze for this one. And now that will die cut out both of these pieces. Um, you don't have to use both. I am going to. And then you'll also have Cajun craze to die cut out your mantle. Okay. You'll have some moody mauve to die cut out your stockings. And you'll have some mossy meadow to die cut out your wreath. And then a few other little leafy pieces there just to kind of make our leaf our wreath pop a little bit so we've got that so that's um these three pieces here and then our wreath here you'll have a piece of early espresso to die cut out they're so tiny um to die cut out the logs now these both come out of one die so pretty cool um because if you are going to build a fire in your fireplace you can add this one on top of it and then last but not least you are going to have a piece of basic white to die cut out these little guys. Now, these are from this die over here, and they are perfect for your little stocking toppers. It actually will die cut out six, and you just need four. So, um, perfect. So, let's go ahead. We're going to start with stamping, and then we're going to go ahead and assemble this thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are all together 15 little die cut pieces. Um, yeah, so just be ready for that. <laughs> all right, I'm going to start with my basic white. I have got my mossy meadow ink and then the stamp that says with joy, peace, and love. And I think that's so sweet. So we're going to ink this up and then I'm just going to stamp this on the bottom here. Hopefully I get it straight. Yeah, pretty good. All right, we can close up mossy meadow. And then I'm just going to use my trimmer to trim this down. I don't trust myself to cut straight across here. So we'll just line this up on our trimmer and cut. And then we've got a little strip of our sentiment. So cute. So let's go ahead and set this off to the side there. And then let's go ahead and we can start assembling. Are you ready? I know. Isn't it so beautiful? Um, all right. Thanks, Leslie. No worries. All right. So let's start assembling. Let's go ahead. We'll start with this DSP here. We will go ahead, add some seal or your adhesive of choice to the back. I was shocked a few weeks ago when I asked um, your if you were a seal or liquid glue fan. And so many people said liquid glue. I was shocked. <laughs> I am a seal girl through and through. So anyway, all right, we've got that DSP added. Now we're going to grab our vellum, which you can see here on my grid. And this is going to help as we assemble everything together. Now, I totally forgot to use my adhesive sheets. So liquid glue is going to be my friend. Okay. So we've got the vellum. I'm going to grab my silicone craft mat because no adhesive will stick to this. And it'll be easier to kind of assemble knowing that nothing can stick. Okay. So we've got this piece. I am going to flip this over. I am going to add seal to this. This is the top of my mantle here. So you can see I added seal at the skinnier part on the bottom. And we're just going to lay this on our copper clay piece. Now you can go as high or low as you want, depending on how long or how big you want your um, mantle piece to go. Okay. All right. So then here, what we can do, take our liquid glue. We're just going to add a little bit. Don't go crazy. There are some, like you can see to give it some texture. There are some dyes that go all the way through. There you go. You can see that. Um, so don't go too crazy and just uh, be patient here. And we're going to line that up. I will show you the backside too when we're done. Okay, so we've got that lined up. Let's grab our little insert piece. And we'll put that right on inside here. Okay, then we can grab our um, early espresso logs. Now, I mentioned before, if you want to put a fire inside, you can. And if you do that, you're going to glue down this piece here that has like two logs, then put your fire, then you put this piece on top. So it kind of looks like it's contained. Um, we are not doing that. I'm not building a fire. So this little piece I don't need. Okay, so what we're going to do instead is we'll grab our liquid glue. Add some to the back here. And then I'm just going to stick this down. Here, let me go this way. Stick that down into the middle of our fire. Whoops. And get glue on your fingers. 100%. Then you wipe it on your silicone craft mat. <laughs> um, all right. So we've got that stuck down. Then we can take our stocking here. 
and I'm just going to grab the stocking and I'm going to put a little bit of glue at the top of each one of these. Okay, try to go light handed there so it doesn't all like squish out. And then we're going to grab these little tiny pieces. Now you can use tweezers or your take your pick tool and I'm going to just stick them on the top of the stockings. Okay, so there's one. Here's the second one. And they kind of have this fun little texture on the sides. They're not perfectly um, linear. Uh, they kind of have this texture. So it's kind of a cool look. I'll hold it up closer in a minute here. And there we go. Okay, so you can see how it's, it looks very realistic. It's got like a little bit of a bump on the sides. So it's kind of fun. All right, so we've got that. Here's the back side of this if you wanted to see. So you can kind of see that this bottom line, I lined up at the bottom and I just kind of stuck it over a little bit, okay? All right, so last but not least, we have our wreath, but I think we're gonna wait for the wreath until we can add it onto our vellum, okay? So we're gonna actually switch over to our little stockings here. And I'm gonna use my liquid glue again and just add a little bit of liquid glue to the back of each stocking. Okay, so we've got that and then we can string this on our mantle. Of course, my stockings are pink. <laughs> um, I love pink. So that is the best color for stockings. <laughs> um, my actual stocking is not pink, like my real life one, not pink, should be. <laughs> All right, I'm going to use dimensionals here on the back of our fireplace. And we'll put one there and then I'll add one more in the middle here. We can peel off the backings. And come here. There we go. One more down here. And then this can go on to our vellum. And I know I'm going to have it sit right about here. So you can kind of see the vellum here on my grid paper or my grid uh, mat. We're just going to stick that down. Beautiful. Just like that. Okay. All right. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my wreath. This is the full, fully circular one. Just add a little dot of glue on the back. And then we can stick that down above our fireplace. Okay. But do you see how like scrawny that looks? <laughs> that is why I die cut, die cut out a couple more of these. So three more of these to just kind of add. And you can do more if you would like it to look fuller. But they, there's kind of a break here. And that's where I'm trying to cover with some extra, okay? Um, so just kind of fill it in a little bit. Add some glue on the back of this one. And stick that down here. And, oops, have it stick to your glue finger. <laughs> and then last one here. And it just looks so much better when we've got it a little bit fuller. And stick this down here, okay? So we've got all of those added. We can close up our liquid glue. I'm going to flip this over and we can see on the vellum everything that is kind of sticking out, right? So that is where I'm going to add my seal, maybe even a little bit up here with the wreath. And then this can get layered onto our card in the center, just like this. Now you can absolutely lay your vellum down first as well if you would like, um, but make sure that you cover it then with your die cut pieces, okay? All right, so then we've got our sentiment and I'm gonna use my snips just to trim off the sides of the sentiment a little bit, um, give it a little bit of an angled banner here. Just like that, let's get rid of these little scrappies. And we will add some dimensionals to the back here. There's one and there's two and peel off these backings. And then we can layer this onto our card, make sure it's the right way. <laughs> and stick this right below our mantle, our fireplace there. All right, to finish this card off, I am using the iridescent discs. And I thought that this top color up here kind of looked like holly berries. So I thought they would be perfect for our wreath because we can't just have it be bare, right? So I'm just going to add a couple. Now, remember those three extras that we die cut? They had a little bit, like they had a V. So I'm going to put it, the, put my dot right in the center of the V, okay? So there's one. 
there's the second one and then there's the third one up there super duper cute all right and that is card number two isn't that one fun i love the scene that we get to make with these dies. I love it so much. So that's card number two. Let me take a quick drink. Okay. And then let's go on to our last card, which is a square card. Thanks, mom. <laughs> um, super cute. Now the inspiration for this one was that there are some random little images in the set and I thought I want to use them. I like to challenge myself to use every single stamp in a stamp set when I am designing my four cards for the week. And so I thought these are the ones that are left and that's what I want to use. So this card kit will have a pecan pie card base that will be square. Um, you will uh, cut out your own DSP. So there's that fun pattern. It will include a mossy meadow circle die cut from the deckled circles dies. It will include a piece of basic white that we can stamp color and die cut on and a strip of real red for our sentiment. Okay, so we are going to start with um, stamping. I'm grabbing the sentiment here. It says many merry thoughts and wishes and my cherry cobbler ink. And we are going to stamp this onto our real red strip. Now you could also choose to um, heat emboss this and that would be very pretty <laughs> um, i'm not heat, heat embossing it today but you could choose to do that as well so there you see we've got our cute little sentiment on there let me grab my basic white here and then we've got these stamps so we've got a mailbox the little collection of things like that match the dsp here and then we've got santa's bag of toys and we are going to use our tuxedo black memento ink to ink up each of the three of these. Okay, so we'll stamp these down. There's one. There's two. And last but not least, and now this one is cool because it stamps all together, but when you die cut it, they die cut out separate. So there's number three. So we've got all those. We can close up our ink. And then we can color these. So for this one, I am going to use crumb cake. So that's a new color from before. Real red, mossy meadow, and pecan pie. Okay, so we've used all of these on previous cards except crumb cake. All right. Um, I know I love the square card too. I think it's just so cute and like so dainty. Um, and I really because these are smaller images they kind of get lost in a big card, right? Like a, a large card. So I thought, you know what? A square one would be so cute. So um, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks, Cherith, and thanks, Grace, as well. So let's start with Pecan Pie. I am going to use my dark one. We are going to color um, Santa's sack here. So there's a little drawstring, and so I'm just going over that with my dark. And then there's some shadows that we can do in here as well. All right, and you can see, just kind of go willy-nilly wherever you think there would be some shading. So we've got that. Let's go ahead, add in our light pecan pie. And the fun here is that you can color things however you want. So have fun with it. And uh, let your creativity run wild, right? Okay, so we've got that colored. Now also with the pecan pie, we're gonna do um, the little, I think it's a lemon, but um, we are going to, there's like a cinnamon stick and a lemon. So I'm just gonna color those in. Um, so great question here. Debbie asked if I make my own square envelopes. I do not, Debbie. And the reason for that is because these actually fit in our standard envelopes. <laughs> so um yeah they fit so you don't even need a special envelope for these i'll show you here yes there's some extra space on the sides but that's okay but it fits right in our standard envelope just like that isn't that cool um so that's why i love this size of square card joan you're not good at coloring well luckily um blends are kind of forgiving so you can try it out um i know that you know it's all we're all, we all have our strengths. <laughs> I forgot to color my gingerbread. So let me pull in my pecan pie again and do that. Um, we all have different strengths. You guys know I am not good at fussy cutting. Maybe I'm okay at it. I don't love it. So 
uh yeah I don't know anyway so you don't have to color these you could also stamp them in a colored ink instead of having to color them in um, if you'd like to go that route so all right I've got my crumb cake here now so I colored kind of the liquid I do not know what liquid is in this cup um, but we're going with cider and I think it's going to be that color <laughs> um, so that's my crumb cake here and then we're going to do this little horse over here with some crumb cake as well so we've got that and then I want to do his little saddle with my dark. Okay, and then we can go in with our light crumb cake and fill in the rest of our liquid. That sounds kind of weird. <laughs> um, oh, cussy cutting, that is funny. <laughs> oh, Joan said she taught elementary and the kids were better than her. That is too funny. Yeah, I know. It's kind of funny to think about because, um, you know, I color a lot and I'm like, this is awesome when I was, you know, like this is a, a skill I learned in preschool and I still get to color. <laughs> All right, we have got um, Mossy Meadow next, how about? There's a couple of presents in our bag here that I'm going to use with Mossy Meadow. So I've got my dark here. There's a front present that I am going to do the ribbon with my dark Mossy Meadow. Yeah, I love to color. So I don't like difficult coloring. So I don't want it to take me a half hour but I do really, really like to color. So I like, um, if I can color multiple images in a half hour, that's great. But one image, no thanks. <laughs> All right, so we've colored that front present. Um, but we can kind of determine what else we wanna color here. So I'm gonna go, there's a back present back here and I'm just gonna do a, the little fringy bow with it in the dark mossy meadow. Okay, so we'll do that. And then I've got my real red and we can do, let's use the dark real red to color in the ribbon on this back present here. Okay, and then we'll go with the little loopies and don't worry if you color outside the lines. <laughs> like I said, the images are small enough, you can't really tell. Also with the dark, I'm gonna color in the star here on our Jack in the Box. And then we are gonna grab our light real red and I'm going to color in the rest of the Jack in the Box, like the actual box part. And then we're also gonna color in the guy. I assume his name is Jack. <laughs> All right, so we've colored him in. Then we've got these candy canes and you can kind of just pick where you want your stripes to go. And I'm actually not really drawing the stripes so much. I'm just kind of dotting. They are small enough I can just dot and get there. So we've got that, all right. So I think that's it for Mossy Meadow, but we're not done with Real Red. Um, what we've, we've got a candy cane over here too. So since I did those ones with the light one, I'm gonna do the one over here with the dark Real Red. This candy cane is bigger, so you can kind of control your marker a little bit better. Okay, and then we've got our little mailbox here, which is super cute. And this thing I'm just doing in all red. So we're gonna go with the dark here, add some shading. Just kind of go around. Ooh, I think I maybe heard thunder. That's so exciting. <laughs> I love when it rains. All right, anyway, sorry for my squirrel moment. We'll color in a little bit of the base down there and then we'll go in with our light real red and color in the rest. Maybe that's why my phone is lagging a little bit because of the weather. Very well could be, right? All right, so then we've got this little top thing here. I think this is just so cute. And I love that they gave us an image for the letters that get mailed to Santa. How sweet is that? All right, and color down here at the base. I colored outside the line a little bit, but like I said, it's okay. <laughs> All right, then we've got a couple of dies here. So let me pull these out. And we are going to, of course, use our post-it note tape to hold them in place. And let's hope we place them better this time so they don't shift. Here's my post-it note tape from before. I'm just going to rip it in half. And we'll add half there. Okay. Here's our mailbox die. Add that. And then last but not least, we'll need a little piece here for these images. And we'll tack this down. Okay, let me grab my mini Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine. 
and we will go ahead and die cut this. Um, oh, Maria said she'd add Wink of Stella. Yeah, you absolutely could add some Wink of Stella. That would be magic. <laughs> it would. It would really look like Santa's magic, right? Thank you so much, Corinne. Um, that would be very cool. All right. We've got these die cut. Whoa, we've got it stuck a little. Let me grab the pieces there and then we'll get this out of the way. So we've got these two pieces here. And then one more stuck to the tape. There he is. Okay, we've got our little cute bag here, all nicely colored. Oh, that one did bump a little, but that's okay. And then we've got our mailbox. All right, so let's go ahead and start assembling. So I'm gonna grab my DSP first, and we are going to add seal to the back or your adhesive of choice. Like I said, if you're a fan of liquid glue, <laughs> um, let's go ahead and lay this on our card front. Okay, then we can fold and burnish. Beautiful. Then we've got our little circle. We're going to add dimensionals to the back of our circle. Peel off our backings here. And lay this onto our card. So cute. I love the DSP too. I love, love, love this DSP. Okay. Um, we are going to grab our little tote bag. Now this is the only one I'm going to add a dimensional to, and I'm just going to kind of add one in the center because I'm going to sneak some other things in underneath. Okay. So you can see that there. So I'm going to kind of plop this right here. We're going to grab our mailbox next. I'm going to add some seal and then we're going to tuck it underneath. Okay. And then we've got our little cup and our candy cane and our gingerbread man. Now these are little, so you might want to actually use liquid glue <laughs> um, or risk it here like I am. Eh, so little. Okay, so then I'm just going to tack these down. So I'm putting my candy cane on our cute little bag. We're going to put the cup back here by the mailbox. And then our little gingerbread man is going to lay down here. Okay, and then we've got to add our sentiment. So I'm going to use my snips just to trim off a little bit of the end here. This is going to get tucked underneath, so it doesn't really matter where you cut it here. You can just kind of play with it. So if I stick it here, that looks great. However, you can see it way comes off the edge of our card over here. Now, again, it will fit in your envelope fine. So that doesn't matter if you want to leave it hanging over the edge. It should be okay. Um, so, but I am just going to trim off a little bit there. And then actually, let me grab a mini dimensional because I just want to cover a little space here. And I'm going to stick that on the very edge and then run seal on the other end here. And that's just going to make it even. So you can see this side here is not going to lay on the circle. And that's the side that has the dimensional. So we can sneak this under and stick that down. So cute. And last but not least, not really last. We have embellishments too. <laughs> Second to last, but not least, um, you will have some linen thread in your kit and we are going to tie a bow and you can choose how big you want your bow to be. And we are going to add this onto our cart. So let me grab here my mini glue dots and we'll stick the knot of our bow right in there. Okay, pick that up and then we are going to stick this down here. So cute. I love it. And then we are going to finish now, last but not least, we are going to finish this time. I'm using the ombre matte decorative dots because I really liked these green ones. Um, so you can pick whichever green ones you want. I think I'm going to go with the lightest color all the way over here. And I'm going to stick one down there and one of the little baby ones right next to it. And that is card number three. What do you guys think of that one? Um, you have never made a square card, Maria. Yeah, you definitely have to try. It is so much fun. Oh, a dryer sheet for uncurling the twine. I have never heard of that. I use dryer sheets to pick up all the detailed little dyes. So um, they definitely come in handy and I definitely have a box of them. <laughs> I'll have to try that out. Um, all right, let me pull in all of our cards here real quick, just so you can see them again. So here are all of the cards that we've made 
today. So as a reminder, if you would like the card kits for free this week, all you have to do is place an order in my online store through this Friday, October 6th at midnight central time. Um, $35 order before tax and shipping will get you the six kits. Uh, make sure you use this host code right here, the ZPWBUKJR. Um, and yes, I have that memorized. Um, <laughs> uh, and that lets me know that you want the class. Okay. So I will pull it up by, um, uh, the host code and see that there. So $35. If you would like um, a little extra gift, a $50 order will also get you a quarter pack of the Traditions of St. Nick DSP, which we used on all of our cards today, um, which you will also need to put the cards together. Okay. Um, yeah. So uh, I should mention too, this host code is embedded in the link. So in the description of this video, whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, you can just click right there um, and it will take you right into my online store with that code. If your order does go over $150, please take out the host code. You earn Stampin' Rewards from Stampin' Up. I want you to get the freebies um, and I can still send you the class. Okay. All right. I think that's all. Again, if you have any questions, oh, I do have one other thing. If you have any questions about the starter kit, please reach out. Um, I'm happy to schedule a call if you want, um, a Zoom, whatever works for you to talk about it. There's no obligation. I'm not going to pressure you into anything and I'm not scary. So um, <laughs> at least I don't think so. I know it's spooktober, but uh, anyway. So, and then the last final thing I have is make sure you're on my newsletter list. If you're not already, the link should be in the description of this video. Um, tomorrow I have a brand new class and new style of class I have never offered before uh, coming out and it's going to go live in my newsletter tomorrow. So make sure you are part of that newsletter.stampwithmelissa.com or click click the link in the description. Okay, I think that's it. We officially hit one hour. I did not think this live was going to take that long. Um, so thanks for sticking with me through the whole thing um, or if you're watching the replay as well. So I will see you guys next week. I hope you have a great rest of your week until then and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.